So what's up, guys? We are going through all of the Wilds of Eldraine cards, uh, reviewing every single card in all of the colors. Then we're going to do multicolored and lands. Uh, we will be talking about the set mechanics each fold for each folder. So don't worry if you're starting with the green video, you're not going to miss any descriptions of the set mechanics. Um, if you're on YouTube, I would love it if you could like this video and subscribe to our channel. Those things really help us out, get seen by more people, show up in people's feeds. Um, and if you are willing, we would love a little comment. Say hello. Tell us which cards you're looking forward to the most. Uh, sh put some shade on my name if I'm overvaluing or undervaluing a card that you're really excited about. Uh, tell me why and or just say hi. Uh, so we're going to jump into green here and we're going to go through these as fast as we can and talk about the exciting ones. Um, first up is Agatha's Champion. For four and a green, you get a 4-4 four, four Human Knight with Bargain. So Bargain is a set mechanic that is basically an extra kicker cost. It's a supplementary casting cost that gives you a bonus in addition to the existing card. Um, in order to pay a bargain cost, you have to sacrifice an artifact, enchantment, or token, of which there are plenty in this set. So I think the opportunities in which you will be able to bargain a card is going to be almost every time. But whether or not you want to bar bargain a card and get rid of your artifact, enchantment, or token depends on the card and your situation. So there are some bad bargains and there are some good bargains. And then there's some situational bargains. So Agatha's champion has trample. And when it enters the battlefield, if it was bargained, it fights up to one target creature you don't control. So because it's a 4-4, four, four, um, I think this is one of those situational bargains. If you need to get rid of something that has less than 4 power um, and has 4 or less toughness... Uh, I would consider bargaining for Agatha's champion. Otherwise, it is a fight trigger, so you will lose Agatha's champion if the opposing creature can do four damage or more. Uh, so definitely pay attention to your situation and decide then and there whether or not to bargain it. I would uh, highly suggest this bargain, uh, but only in specific situations. Next up is Beanstalk Worm. So this has an adventure. Adventure is coming back. Obviously, Wilds of Eldraine takes place in Eldraine, which is a storybook realm. And adventure is a mechanic from the original Thrones of Eldraine, Throne of Eldraine. Uh, so it makes a lot of sense that they would bring it back because it's a fantastic mechanic, I think. Uh, so Beanstalk Worm is four and a green for a 5-4 plant worm with reach, which is pretty good. Um, the adventure is called Plant Beans. One and a green for a sorcery. You may play an additional land this turn. Uh, not a stellar sorcery, but it's pretty good, especially because you can then ramp to play Beanstalk Worm earlier. Um, for adventures, you have to cast the adventure side uh, from your hand. If you play the Beanstalk Worm, you cannot then cast the adventure while it's on the battlefield. Um, and when you do cast the adventure from your hand, you exile the card, the, the beanstalk worm, and then you can play the beanstalk worm from exile. So you have to keep that in mind as well. If your opponents care about things going into exile, or if you do, uh, definitely keep track of that. Uh, next up, we have Bestial Bloodline. For one and a green, you get an enchantment aura. There's lots of token auras in this set. Uh, but this, there's a few real auras, not um, tokens. So this is an enchant creature. Enchant creature gets plus two, plus two. And then you can pay four and a green return bestial bloodline from your graveyard to your hand. Uh, this is fine. It's not exciting. But uh, the fact that you're able to bring it back when uh, you have a little bit more mana is decent. But... Giving it plus two, plus two is just not enough for me to like strive to do that. If it was plus two, plus two and trample, maybe uh, I think that would be a little bit better. But otherwise, it's it's not great. Next up is possibly the best card in this whole color. 
Blossoming Tortoise is two green green for a 3-3 turtle. Whenever Blossoming Tortoise enters the battlefield or attacks, mill three cards, then return a land card from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. Activated abilities of lands you control cost one less to activate. Land creatures you control get plus one plus one. So this is really strong. Um, this is an Eldrain set, so there are a bunch of creature lands that we'll get to in a couple uh, videos. Uh, but keep in mind that Blossoming Tortoise, very strong. Uh, it is mythic rare, so it's obviously a strong card. But if you do open one, I would suggest thinking about taking it. Bramble Familiar is next. It is one in a green for a 2-2 Elemental Raccoon that acts as a mana dork. So for two mana, you get a dork, and then you can pay one in a green, tap it to discard a card, and return Bramble Familiar to its owner's hand. And the reason why you want to do that is because the adventure side, which is normally cheaper than the main card, is way more expensive in this case. Uh, fetch quest is five green green for a sorcery, mill seven cards, then put a creature, enchantment, or land card from among the milled cards onto the battlefield. So you want to play Bramble Familiar on turn two, use it as a mana dork for as long as you want, and then return it to your hand eventually so that you can cast the adventure side because you can't cast the adventure from the battlefield. You can only cast the adventure if this card is in your hand. So being able to return it to your hand makes a lot of sense. I think this card is fantastic. Brave the Wilds is next. For one green, you get a sorcery with bargain. So again, bargain, you can sacrifice an artifact, enchantment, or token as you cast this spell and you get a buffed ability. Uh, if this spell was bargained, target land you control becomes a 3-3 elemental creature with haste and is still a land, and that is indefinitely, so it's always going to be a 3-3. Um, and then for the main part of the card, you get to search your library for a basic land card, reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle. So not bad. It's pretty standard kind of fetch a land card in green. It's just a nice little rampy, little rampy ramp for one. Um... If you play this on turn one, you're not going to have anything to bargain for it. So that's not going to happen. But that does make it a multifaceted card because in the future, if you play this on turn four, you might have something to bargain for it. So you get at least get a 3-3 three, three elemental creature token out of it. Not token, uh, land creature. Next up is Commune with Nature. One green for a sorcery. Look at the top five cards of your library. You may reveal a creature card from among them and put it into your hand, put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order, or in any order, sorry. Um, this is an okay card. Curse of the Werefox is next. Two and a green for a sorcery. Create a monster roll token attached to target creature you control. When you do, that creature fights up to one target creature you don't control. So rolls are a new mechanic in Wilds of Eldraine. They're basically token enchantments that are auras you attach them to your creatures or your opponent's creatures there are six of them in total uh, they all do different things one of them is negative the, the other five are all versions of positive uh, the monster roll here specifically says enchanted creature gets plus one plus one and has trample and then obviously as a result your creature fights up to one target creature you don't control again it's a fight spell so they're never my favorite they're definitely underpowered versus bite spells which just deal damage instead of actually uh fighting uh so you have to be very meticulous where you put this monster roll um but yeah it's fine elvish archivist is next one in a green for an oh one elf artificer Whenever an artifact enters the battlefield under your control, put two 1-1 one -one counters on Elvish Archivist. This ability only triggers once each turn. Or whenever one or more enchantments enter the battlefield under your control, draw a card. This ability triggers only once each turn. Um, so this is a really cool design. I think it's, it's really powerful. If you have the ability to play both an artifact and an enchantment on a given turn, your Elvish Archivist becomes a if you play this on turn two and then cast both of those things on turn three uh your archivist becomes a two three and you get to draw an extra card and then you can continually do those things 
uh, as the game progresses. I think this is one of those cards that people are going to look at, think that there's too much text, and pass on. An 0-1 for two mana, it just doesn't seem like a good idea. Um, but these cards will get out of hand quickly and, and maybe win some games for you. Next up is Feral, Feral Encounter. Green, green for a sorcery. Look at the top five cards of your library. You may exile a creature card from among them. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. You may cast the exiled card this turn. At the beginning of your next combat phase this turn, target creature you control deals damage equal to its power to up to one target creature you don't control. So this is a very complicated bite spell. Um, you're dealing damage, you're not taking damage, uh, but you also have to be able to cast uh, the creature that you exile or you have to already have a creature on the battlefield um, in order for this to do anything. It's pretty cool. I, I like it. I don't know um, if it's going to work to its fullest potential that often. Next up is Ferocious Werefox. It's three and a green for a 4-3 Elf Fox Warrior with Trample. It has an adventure on it called Guard Change. For one and a green, you get an instant. Create a monster roll token attached to target creature you control. Uh, again, the monster roll says enchanted creature gets plus one, plus one, and has trample. So that's pretty good. Graceful takedown is an interesting one. It's one and a green for a sorcery. Any number of target enchanted creatures you control and up to one other target creature you control each deal damage equal to their power to target creature you don't control. So this is very strong if you have a bunch of enchanted creatures. It is sort of strong if you don't either way it's not weak um and can most of the time deal with the creature you're trying to get rid of uh next up is gruff triplets three green 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 for a three three satyr warrior with trample when it enters the battlefield if it isn't a token create two tokens that are copies of it when gruff triplets dies Put a number of 1-1 counters on it equal to each creature you control named Gruff Triplets. So when the first one dies, um, when the first one dies, put a number of 1-1 counters equal to its power on each creature you control named. So the first one dies and the remaining two become 5-5s five and then the last the second one dies, and the remaining one becomes a 6-6. Six, six. So you get three 3-3s, three, threes, and then you have two 5-5s, five, and then you have one 6-6. Six, six. So it's not bad. That middle one is definitely the best, because that's 10 power and toughness total. Uh, that's the highest it will get. Uh, it's not bad. could be fun next up is hamlet glutton five green green for a six six giant with bargain so again you may sacrifice an artifact enchantment or token to get the bargain price uh this spell costs two less to cast if it's bargained it has trample and whenever hamlet glutton enters the battlefield you gain three life uh this is these are the examples of bad bargains whenever a bargain is only making the card cheaper to cast it is almost never worth it because most of the time you're uh sacrificing things that could also pay for the hamlet glutton um so a lot of the times you just have to be willing to pay the full seven for this but seven mana for a six six with trample that gains three life is really good so it's really good especially for a common uh, Hollow Scavenger is next. Two and a green for a 3-2 wolf creature with pay one, sacrifice a food. Hollow Scavenger gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. Activate only once each turn. And then it has Bakery Raid as an adventure. It's one green for a sorcery. Create a food token. Pretty good. Uh, Howling Galefang is next. It is two green green for a 4-4 four, four beast creature. Great value out the gate with Vigilance. Grave value. 
Howling Galefang has haste as long as you own a card in exile that has an adventure. So when you cast an adventure, you have to put the rest of the card in exile. It is on its adventure. Um, and Gale Fang will have haste as long as you have an adventure out there. So that's pretty good. And then once you've done the combat on the first turn, um, you can play that card from the from its adventure side. You can take that card out of exile because you no longer need the haste because Howl Fang... Howling Gale Fang will just be out now. Um, so I like this card. The Huntsman Re Huntsman's Redemption is next. This is very interesting because it has Liliana's Veil and Garrick on it. So I'm intrigued to find out more about what this story is. It is two and a green for an enchantment saga. Chapter one, create a 3-3 three, three beast creature token. Chapter 2, you may sacrifice a creature if you do search your library for a creature or basic land card. Reveal it, then put it into your hand. Chapter 3, up to 2 target creatures. Each get plus 2, plus 2, and gain trample until end of turn. So this is really interesting because uh, turn 1, you get a 3-3 three, three for 3 mana. S sorry, turn 3. If the first turn you play this, um, you're basically paying 3 mana for a 3-3. Three, three. And then chapter two, you can use that 3-3 to trigger the sacrifice ability. Go get your best creature. And then turn three, you get to um, put two two counters on two creatures and give them trample. So I think that's pretty strong. Next up, we have Leaping Ambush. One green for an instant. Target creature gets plus one, plus three, and gains reach until end of turn. Untap it. So this is like sneaky reach and sneaky block um the only downside is that most people that are attacking aren't attacking with spent mana so they have all their mana open so they can react to you casting this really easily um yeah knights knight of the sweets revenge is next three and a green for an enchantment when knight of sweets revenge enters the battlefield create a food token that's pretty decent food tokens you have food you control have tap to add green so this is interesting because it just says foods you control and there's a few creature cards in this set that are are foods as a creature type so that's interesting that they all become mana dorks even your normal food artifact tokens all become mana dorks and then for five green green you can sacrifice knight of sweets revenge creatures you control get plus x plus x until end of turn where x is the number of foods you control activate only as a sorcery um this is really interesting it's one of those cards that's super cool sounding um but generally those cards don't see a lot of play and they don't kind of work the way we're hoping that they work when the set actually comes out so keep your eyes on this one it's very fun um but I can't guarantee from where we're sitting now that it's going to see much play or be that useful. We'll see. Next up is Red Tooth Genealogist. Two and a green for a 2-3 Elf Advisor. When Red Tooth Genealogist enters the battlefield, create a Royal Roll token. Attach it to another target creature you control. Uh, that's pretty good. Royal Roll is another one of the uh, token enchantments. It says um, enchanted creature gets plus one, plus one, and has ward one. So basically, you play your advisor and you make a royal. Uh, it's pretty pretty decent. Next up, we have Red Tooth Vanguard. One and a green for a 3-1 elf warrior with trample. That's really good. A 3-1 for two with trample is decent. Uh, whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, you may pay two. If you do, return Red Tooth Vanguard from your graveyard to your hand. Uh, so that's really strong because there's a lot of enchantments going on. All of those token rolls also are enchantments, so all of those will trigger. I think the Red Tooth Vanguard is going to be a nice recurring uh, attacker. Return from the Wilds is next. Two and a green for a sorcery. Choose two. Search your library for a basic land card, put it into the battlefield tapped, then shuffle, create a 1-1 one, one white human creature token, or create a food token. Uh, those are some great options. I think this is a, a pretty good card. Uh, I Personally, I would want to choose number one and number two 
or number three as often as possible. Um, but there's probably some circumstances where you want to have that one, one white human creature token. Maybe you need a chump blocker or you just want something that you won't feel so bad using as a bargaining chip uh, for some other cards. But uh, yeah, I like this. Root Rider Fawn is next. One and a green for a 1-3 Seder Scout. It is a mana dork, so it taps to add one, one green. But you could also pay one to tap it to add one mana of any color, so it filters mana. So I like these. Um, giving it a a 1-3 power and toughness is really strong because you're not going to want to attack with it. It's a mana dork, but it also can block decently early on. Um, I like it quite a bit. Royal Treatment is next. One green for an instant. Target creature you control gains hexproof until end of turn. Create a Royal Roll, roll token attached to that creature. Uh, so this is fun because um, obviously one green to give something hexproof is kind of like standard. And then they've iterated on that and added the Royal Roll token uh, as an addition so it feels a little bit stronger uh i like this card quite a bit and to remind you royal roll says enchanted creature has plus one plus one and ward one uh so that's just an added benefit to the hex proof next up is my favorite green card sentinel of lost lore it's one green green for a three four elf knight when it etbs choose one or more uh, option one is return target card you own in exile that has an adventure to your hand. So it basically lets you cast your adventure a second time. Or option two, put target card you don't own in exile that has an adventure on the bottom of its owner's library. So you can uh, stop your opponent from playing a powerful card out of its adventure. Or option three, exile target player's graveyard. So it also has graveyard hate. Um, this card is fantastic and I hope that I get the opportunity to use all three of these at once. It's great. I love this card. Sky Beast Tracker is next. Three and a green for a 2-4 giant archer with reach. See, this makes a lot more sense. In the red section, we found a dwarf that had reach. This giant archer that's as tall, at least like standing up and these birds are flying past it. Actually, those are Canada geese, Canadian geese. Interesting. Um, this having reach makes a lot of sense. Whenever you cast a spell with mana value 5 or greater, create a food token. Um, a 2-4 with reach for 4 is fine. It's just a good blocker. It's not great. Yeah. Spider food is next. 2 and a green for a sorcery. Destroy up to 1 target artifact enchantment or creature with flying and then create a food token. So the 2 mana, 3 mana create destroy target artifact enchantment or creature with flying uh, has kind of become a standard in magic every set pretty much has one this one because foods matter for the green and black archetype um, you also get the added benefit of getting a free food token so that's cool it's just another example of that slight power creep it's they're giving you a card that we normally get in sets like this but it has a little addition to it Next up is Stormkeld Vanguard. Four green green for a 6-7 giant warrior. Stormkeld Vanguard can't be blocked by creatures with power two or less. And it has an adventure on it that says bear down. One and a green for sorcery, destroy target artifact or enchantment. That's very cool. I like that. This is a powerful card. Uh, Tangle Span Lookout is two and a green for a two three Seder. Whenever an aura enters the battlefield under your control, draw a card. Um, this card is fine. I feel like them specifying aura versus any enchantment makes it fine. If it was enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, um, then this card would be great. Otherwise, it's kind of hit or miss. Territorial Witch Stalker is next. For one and a green, you get a 2-3 Wolf with Defender. At the beginning of combat on your turn, if you control a creature with power 4 or greater, Witch Stalker gets plus 1, plus 0 until end of turn and can attack this turn as though it didn't have Defender. Um, this is kind of boring. It's The art is cool. 
Um, having a 2-3 defender on turn 2 isn't bad. I kind of wish it was like a 2-4 or something like that, but uh, you know, being able to attack with it once you have something bigger on the battlefield is just kind of meh. It's, 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 a, it's a tough thing to trigger, um, especially if you're playing like limited or something. I don't know. I don't love it. Thunderous Debut is next. This card is ridiculous. Six green green for a sorcery with bargain. So you may sacrifice an artifact or enchantment or token as you cast the spell to get its bargaining chip. Uh, look at the top 20 cards of your library. You may reveal up to two creature cards from among them. If the spell was bargained, put the revealed cards onto the battlefield. Otherwise, they go into your hand, then shuffle. Uh, so this is the ideal bargain. This is a bargain that is so good, you have to do it. Um, paying eight mana to put two random creatures from the top third of your library onto the battlefield is bonkers. This card is a bomb. It looks like a bomb. It is a bomb. It's going to be a bomb. Um, you don't even have to mark my words because it's going to be a bomb uh, no matter what. It is currently really undervalued at like 48 cents at my LGS. So we'll have to see how often it can be played. But this is... um, What is that card in white and green that lets you look at the top of your library and put cheap stuff onto the battlefield? Collected Company. This is like um, spicier Collected Company almost. Collected. Come, oh, I spelled. Put an extra letter on the end there. The collected company is look at the top six cards of your library. Put up to two creature cards with converted mana cost three or less from among them onto the battlefield. Put the rest on the bottom of your library. So this is collected company plus some. Um, especially if you can bargain it, those things go directly onto the battlefield. You have the ability to look at the top 20 cards of your library. So you get to pick two outstanding cards. Um, I think this is insane, but it has the potential to be one of those super insane cards that just nobody plays um, in constructed formats. It's obviously going to be a huge bomb if you can cast it in limited, um, but in constructed formats it it just might be one of those crazy cards that nobody ever plays because they can't you know swallow the idea of paying eight to play it or what have you um i think it's super interesting i also think it would be really good in um the green nykthos pioneer deck potentially even in the mono green Tron. Um, but yeah, interesting to say the least. Titanic growth is next. It's one in a green for an instant the target creature gets plus four plus four until end of turn. This is pretty standard. Um, Titanic growth has been around for a long time. Luckily, we get another gorgeous piece of Iris art for this um, iconic artist. Uh, and I love it. Toadstool Admirer is next. It's one green for a 1-1 one, one oof with Ward 2. You can pay three and a green. Put a 1-1 one, one counter on Toadstool Admirer. Um, it's, it's not great, but it's fine. Tough Cookie is next, which is actually good. One and a green for a 2-2 two, two food golem. When Tough Cookie enters the battlefield, create a food token. A two and a green target non-creature artifact you control becomes a 4-4 four, four artifact creature until end of turn. Uh, so you can animate your food tokens, which is really neat. And then you can pay two to sacrifice tough cookie and gain three life. So you basically sacrifice it as if it's any other food token. Um, I like this. It's fun. Then we have Troublemaker Oof which is one and a green for a 2-2 two, two oof with bargain. So you may sacrifice an artifact, enchantment, or token as you cast this spell. Uh, when Troublemaker Oof enters the battlefield, if it was bargained, exile target, artifact, or enchantment, an opponent controls. Uh, this is this bargain is decent. It's, it's one of the situational bargains um, where 
if you need to get rid of an artifact or enchantment your opponent has, definitely bargain for it. Uh, if you don't, then don't. Uh, up the Beanstalk is next. It is one and a green for an enchantment. Up the Beanstalk enters the battlefield when up the Beanstalk enters the battlefield. And whenever you cast a spell with mana value 5 or greater, draw a card. Uh, so two mana draw a card is pretty decent. It replaces itself immediately and then continues to give you value if you get to the 5 or greater mana value cards. Uh, Verdant Outrider, these... These wood knights are so cool. Apparently, according to the story, um, when the Phyrexians invaded, this group of knights was so upset that everyone ditched their courts in order to fight back the Phyrexians that they secluded themselves into the forest in order to um, protect the remaining nature Oh, it says right here, some knights who survived the invasion have forsaken what remains of their courts. The newly formed Verdant Order has sworn to defend the last untouched parts of the wilds. And that's why they're so like wooden and leafy is because they're just like out there in the woods protecting the last remaining vestiges of nature. Uh, so Verdant Outrider is two and a green for a 4-2 human knight. It has an activated ability that says one in a green Verdant Outrider can't be blocked by creatures with power two or less this turn. Um, so basically one in a green and it gets by anything that could kill it um, with power two or less this turn. Okay, so they can't like chump block it, but also kill it. Yeah, it's 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 pretty decent. Uh, next up is the green virtue. So this virtue is based on Garen Brig. Uh, this is the virtue of strength. Five green green for an enchantment. If you tap a basic land for mana, it produces three times as much of that mana instead. Uh, this is very strong. Its adventure is Garen Brig growth. For one green, you get to return target creature or land card from your graveyard to your hand. Uh, super strong card. I think that it is among the more expensive of the virtues. Um, I don't remember if any of the virtues were actually seven mana. Uh, but this is going to be very interesting in the Nykthos ramp deck for sure. I think it's going to be very cool. And then lastly for green is Welcome to Sweet Tooth. This is one in a green for an enchantment saga. Chapter one, create a one, one white human creature token. Chapter two, create a food token. And then chapter three, put X one, one counters on target creature. You control where X is one plus the number of food tokens you control. Um, it's, it's pretty decent. It kind of like works within itself. It gives you the creature to target. Um, it gives you the food to buff it. Um, I said Buffett when talking about food. Uh, now I'm hungry. It's it's good. I think going back through all of the green cards, I think this is my sleeper. I think obviously Sentinel of the Lost Lore is my favorite card in this color. Uh, Blossoming Tortoise is very, very close second. But these are obviously good cards. They are marked with the rarity of a good card they have all of the signs of being uh good cards i think storm Kelt vanguard is my sleeper hit because it has you really good utility in the adventure side but also uh really good ut uh, power and toughness on the full card side so i think drafting some of these in limited is going to be huge having some of these in constructed is going to be huge um I love this card. I think this is very cool. Uh, we're going to take one really quick bio break, and then we're going to jump into the multicolored cards and follow that up with the lands and artifacts. If you're watching this on YouTube later on, after we've recorded it and put it up on YouTube, obviously, uh, thank you so much for watching this. Uh, it would mean the world to us if you could 
give this video a like and maybe subscribe to the channel. Getting those numbers up really helps our viewership grow and get these videos in front of more people. Uh, if you want to, please leave a comment, say hello, or tell me which green card you're most excited to draft or build around. Um, tell me if I'm undervaluing something or overvaluing something. Tell me if you think Thunderous Debut is going to be one of those cards that nobody actually plays. It's so good that nobody plays it. There's been so many of those kinds of cards. Um, I remember all the Invoke cards from Kamigawa were really powerful, but only people only played one of them. And uh, it took them a while to even come around on that one. Uh, so let me know in the comments below what green cards you're most excited about. Which one you think maybe I've overvalued? And I appreciate you being here. Thank you.